Uh, okay, so we had a question from the question box, and I'm going to read the passage before I get to the question. The passage is from 1 Kings chapter 2, from 13 through 25. Now, Adonijah, son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. She asked, Do you come peacefully? Peacefully, he replied, and then asked, May I talk with you? Go ahead, she answered. You know the kingship was mine, he said. All Israel expected me to be king. But then the kingship was turned over to my brother, for the Lord gave it to him. So now I have just one request of you. Don't turn me down. She said to him, Go on. He replied, Please speak to King Solomon, since he won't turn you down. Let him give me Abishag the Shunammite as a wife. Very well, Bathsheba replied. I will speak to the king for you. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him about Adonijah. The king stood up to greet her, bowed to her, sat down on his throne, and had a throne placed for the king's mother. So she sat down at his right hand. Then she said, I have just one small request of you. Don't turn me down. Go ahead and ask, mother, the king replied, for I won't turn you down. So she replied, let Abishag the Shunammite be given to your brother Adonijah as a wife. King Solomon answered his mother, why are you requesting Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Since he is my elder brother, you might as well ask the kingship for him. For the priest Abithar and for Joab, son of... Z I'm sorry, did I miss a line? Since he is my elder brother, you might as well ask the kingship for him. For the priest Abithar and for Joab, son of Zariah. What? That's how it goes? Hmm. Okay. Then King Solomon took an, took an oath by the Lord. May God punish me and do so severely if Adonijah has not made this request at the cost of his life. And now, as the Lord lives, the one who established me, seated me on the throne of my father David, and made me a dynasty as he promised, I swear Adonijah will be put to death today. Then King Solomon dispatched Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was struck, who struck down Adonijah, and he died. So the question is, why did Bathsheba take this request to Solomon? Did she know that he had ulterior motives? And this is a very good question. Very, very good question. And I need to kind of set up the answer before we get to it. First off, Adonijah tried to appoint himself king when he saw that his father, David, was getting ready to die. So he kind of just tried to, I mean, I'm the oldest. This is, this is, this is mine. And so he just tried to appoint himself. And uh, as a last-ditch effort, a, a prophet and Bathsheba went to D David and got Solomon appointed right before uh, things got too serious. Um, and, but that's in the very beginning of the book, in chapter 1. But you see that, uh, you see that this son, uh, Adonijah, still was holding on. If you notice the words that he used when he was talking to Bathsheba, he said, the kingdom was mine. And then he says, they all expected me to be the king. So you can see that he hasn't quite let go of the issue. <laughs> he's, still, he's still trying to hold on. Um, it might be significant, uh, I just want to mention this, that this was before Solomon made the request for wisdom. Um, that might be significant. I'm not quite sure. Maybe he would have uh, responded differently later on in his life, but either way, it might be significant. Uh, and we see that Solomon answers from a place of insecurity, but for good reason, because his position was insecure. Um, he, had, he already had people not totally on board with him being the king, uh, and just it, it was not, <laughs> not optimal. <laughs> and uh, so if you look at the face of this, it really seems like a reasonable compromise, okay? So I didn't get to be the king. I at least should get to marry this woman. Like, what's the big deal? If you read in, in the begin in chapter one, the chapter before this, it says that this woman Abishag was appointed to sleep with the king, not in a sexual way. It goes out of the way to say they never had sexual interaction. But he was old; he couldn't keep himself warm, and so her job was just to be his caretaker, go in the bed and try to warm him up. I guess some form of cuddling or something. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that looks like, but uh, that that was her job. That's why she was hired. But there was never any intercourse between the two. Um, so it, it's, it seems like a reasonable compromise. It, se it, said that it says that she was very beautiful. Um, I believe it says that she was the most beautiful. It really goes into like this real elaborate language on her. Uh, but the problem is, is that back in these days, when a king took over for another king, there was kind of this rule that he had to kind of take care of the last king's harem. Um, you know, he had, it was one of the things of being the king. It's not that you had relations with him. In fact, usually you didn't. Um, 
one big reason of that would be that they were all, you know, kind of older. They're kind of ready to retire from that business, if you understand. Uh, but um, so it was kind of one of the things with being the new king. Uh, so when you look at it with that, it's very likely that Adonijah's issue here is that he's trying to stake a claim, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, you know, he it should have been mine. I'm the oldest brother, so I'll just, uh, it's innocent, you know. There's nothing, no, no, no wrong with this. I'm going marry to this, marry this person. Um, and then you get to the issue that he, she wasn't actually technically part of David's harem, so it kind of sounded okay, harmless. Uh, and in a lot of cases, it's very easy to compromise for peace, right? I mean, we all do this in many ways. Um, basically, Bathsheba coming to the idea of, you know, he settled, so we should just let him have it. Um, but one thing that we see from the story is that it was, bro- it was very dangerous for Solomon to keep his brother around. So that takes us to Bathsheba. Why did she actually, um, why did she actually take this request? There's really two options here. Number one is that she was naive. She didn't understand the implications of what Adonijah was asking. And number two is that she was trying to tip Solomon off, um, trying to, you know, kind of, hey, your brother's trying to, he hasn't quite let go. Um, I find it very unlikely that she's trying to tip Solomon off for a couple of reasons. First off, how she presents the request. She says, hey, please don't, please don't, you know, please listen to this. Uh, and then when Solomon hears it, his response shows that he's kind of a little bit irritated. <laughs> so, I mean, this seems to imply that she didn't understand the implica- implications because Solomon takes the time to explain it to her. Hey, why don't we just go ahead and give him the kingship anyways? I mean, the priest is with, uh, is with my brother, and things aren't really going great. Uh, I haven't even really established myself. Um, and uh, this is something that I think is very important because I think that churches do the exact same thing nowadays. I don't think people really change. I think they get a little bit more uh, complicated, but I don't think they change. Um, yeah, I'm talking about in, in history, in world history. You know, you've got like barbarians, and they're still doing the same thing as we do today. It's just we have toys, and they didn't. <laughs> um, but one thing that you see is when people can't get to a leader, they go to other people to get to them. I mean, that's just the way of how it is. Like, well, I can't get the pastor to do this, so I'm going to go to his wife, or I'm going to go to the board, or whatever. And they just try to weasel something in, I'd be at a complaint or a request or whatever. And then they try to see who's the weakest link. You are the weakest link, you know. And then when they find that person, then they just kind of build on it, and, you know, uh, they get to the leader that way. And it seems like that's exactly what's going on here, that Bathsheba didn't realize the the danger, the danger of, of the situation. And uh, so why do people do it now? Well, I think people do it now for a lot of different reasons. Number one, I think sometimes they're misled. Sometimes they just, oh, this person doesn't mean anything by it. And so then they take the request or whatever. Um, that could have happened with Bathsheba. Another reason is sometimes they just don't understand their job. <laughs> they think their job is to do, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, union rep. That's what it's called. I mean, it's my job to listen to complaints, and I'd bring the, re- the complaints to the leader. It seems like maybe this Bathsheba might have been a little bit unsure of what her job as the mother was. <laughs> like, do I take this request to him or not? Um, another thing is sometimes people do it because you just get caught into gossip. You're used to talking about people or whatever, and it just seems innocent, and you don't realize that you've become a gossip. That, that happens a lot. Sometimes it is uh, av- avoiding conflict. And I think there might have been some with that with Bathsheba, where you don't really want to rock the boat. I mean, we just kind of got past this whole David dying thing, and you don't really want to stir something up. You know, let's just kind of try and make peace. And it never works that way. The more peace you cave into, the more the terrorist wins, and it keeps on going and going. Um, another reason why people sometimes do it is uh, simply being arrogant. Um, but I really think that was the case for Bathsheba. She doesn't really seem to be coming from a place of arrogance. Uh, sometimes people do it just because they don't have a direction. They, they, don't, they don't know uh, what's, where Solomon was going, what the point of it was. So they just kind of like, yeah, why not? Let's throw the dog a bone, you know, whatever. Uh, when you have leadership that is unified and they know where they're going, it's a lot different. Um, but, okay, so all those things... Those, all those possibilities, we have this. This is the problem, is that we don't have her heart, just her actions. And that really leaves us, as many cases in the Bible, it leaves us with a lot of questions. 
with not always a lot of answers. So I would say my bet is that Bathsheba was doing it just like we do today to try and keep peace. That would be my assumption. Um, she's trying to just kind of, okay, and she doesn't understand the implications of it. Now, I think at the heart, most most churches are destroyed by gossip, not by moral issues. Like, I shouldn't say moral issues. Gossip is a moral issue. Not by, like, um, drastic departure from the faith. Most of the times. And a lot of times that gossip starts in a very innocent place. It's just something where you don't even understand that you're doing it. You don't mean it to get that big. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. More people get involved and more people get involved. It seems like that's kind of what's happening here, just a harmless thing. So one thing that I thought was interesting, I heard this in a leadership conference, and I thought I'd relate to you because I think it exactly applies to this. Faithful people, they support you. I am faithful to whoever the leader is, right? But a loyal person is different from a faithful person. Faithful people, you don't really want a whole lot of them on leadership teams, be it staff or board or anything. Faithful people have a very limited purpose. Um, they, they oftentimes mo- cause more problems than, than anything. What you want is loyal people, and the difference being that loyal people protect you. Faithful people simply support you. And it sounds good, like, oh, I'm, I'm faithful, but that's not really something that you want to look for. You want, you want people that are loyal, you know what I mean? Not just they aren't going to talk about you. They aren't going to let other people talk about you. When somebody tries to gossip about you, you know that they're going to have your back. You know what I mean? There's a big difference there between faithfulness and loyalty. And I don't think that Bathsheba really got that yet. But after Solomon blew up, I, I have a feeling that you kind of figured it out pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um, obviously, we don't see all of Adonijah either. He could be, have been trying to intimidate Bathsheba. Or maybe he was simply not meaning anything at all. Maybe he was naive. But either way, how it is is how it is. And we end the story with uh, the brother being killed. (laughs) So at the end of the day, we don't have any solid answers, just assumptions. And, um, yeah. So I like questions in the Bible that have definite answers. I'm not real big on on ones that don't have definite answers. I, I'm like, ah, I really want the answer. And a lot of times it's the Bible isn't quite so black and white. It causes you to think a lot more. Like Ecclesiastes, that book is such a pain <laughs> because it doesn't just come out and say it. It's got to go all this like two steps forward and one step back. It's like, ah, just give me the answer. Job does the exact same thing too. You go through why do good people suffer and you get to the end of the book and you don't really get an answer. It's like, ah, darn it. Lord, I thank you for everything you're doing in us and through us. Uh, I pray you'd uh, continue to, uh, to to work in us, Lord. Uh, we are not finished paintings. <laughs> help us to, to help us to submit to your scalpel. Help us to uh, be okay with needing you more. Help us to uh, to realize our need and help us to continue to grow and not to become excuse me, not to become hard hardened hard hearted, where we have allowed a sin in our lives so long that we reach a place of unbelief. And uh, Lord, I thank you so much. Uh, for your, what you're doing in Roswell. We know that you're moving, um, even though we don't necessarily see the fruit yet. And uh, Lord, we love you, and uh, amen.